Qualcomm wants to rival Apple's M1 by late 2022 and how to stop your HomePod catching fire. I'm IK Dave and I simplify Apple so that everything just works for you and if you want the latest Apple news, leaks and rumours every weekday at 12 UTC, like the video, subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell. And straight into the news today, Qualcomm are planning their own ARM desktop chips to rival Apple's M1 by late 2022. Nice a bit of competition you might think, well let's just hold fire on that for a moment. Currently Qualcomm builds their ARM based SoCs by using reference designs from ARM but following their acquisition of Nuvia, a chip design firm that's been set up by three of Apple's former Apple Silicon engineers, they believe they'll be able to design their own cores unique to Qualcomm in the very near future. Of course, a big part of the reason that Apple's M1 is so effective is its deep integration with the software and how the additional hardware decoders are optimised for what's needed in the operating system. Now, it's thought that Windows 11 will be far more focused on non-X86 processors be that ARM or potentially RISC-V, but it's not being written specifically with Qualcomm's new silicon in mind. And also add to that one other thing, they're hoping to compete with M1 by 2022, and bear in mind that M1 is Apple's 2020 low-powered chip. Apple will be likely running the M3 by then, which is likely to be around 50% faster than M1, and also likely to have M2X in the Pro laptops and iMacs, which by my best estimates will probably have around 120 to 125% of M1's performance in multi-core. Plus, all of that optimization, and I think Apple has got a reasonable buffer for a little while to come versus Qualcomm. Next up, are you running the Audio OS beaters on your HomePod? If so, go and unplug it. Now, I'll wait for you. Done? Okay. So, Apple doesn't offer AudioOS public beta access, and this might well be a part of the reason why. According to frontpagetech.com, right now on Reddit, that the HomePod beta they've installed has caused a number of the speakers to overheat to the point where they die. Like, fried board, hot to the touch, won't pause music, and then dead forever hot. It's also worth mentioning that Apple won't cover damage to your hardware when it results from putting a software on there that you shouldn't be using in the first place, so don't expect these to be replaced even under Apple Care, Warranty, or anything else by Apple. So yeah, in general, just don't use profile websites outside of Apple to force other software onto your devices. Don't use dev beaters unless you are actually a developer is also probably a good rule of thumb as well. While a business might be annoyed that a device is damaged during development, Businesses also have insurance for that kind of thing, and it's a known risk for developing stuff, and you are developing something potentially to make money, so kind of buying some hardware to uh, to make that work is a par for the course. Your HomePod's dying because you just wanted some mildly new features a month or so early is probably a pretty bad trade-off. So yeah, if you have installed one of these beaters, go and unplug it. It's not worth the risk to your devices. Wait until you can get either the original software back on there, or if you must have betas on it, if you must have an unauthorized beta, then at least wait for the next one to be updated onto it before you turn it back on. And as a slightly wider kind of argument as well, this might be another good argument for Apple when it comes to using unauthorized software and trying to avoid using outside app stores after all of the Epic stuff that's been going on. Because... If software is forced onto there that hasn't been checked by Apple, that hasn't been that hasn't been optimized, that hasn't been verified as being safe for the devices, you might end up with bricked hardware and it's not Apple's fault. <laughs> so in this case, obviously it would potentially be Apple's fault because it is their software, but it is also test software that is not ready for prime time, that is not ready for normal people to be using, and not ready for people that aren't kind of monitoring this sort of thing. So at your own risk, I guess. Now, into our cave answers, we have a few questions again today, starting off with Marcin Kowalczyk. Hashtag I cave answers. I wonder how an M1 iMac would perform with its fans broken slash disconnected. Would it turn into an M1 Air performance-wise? Good question, and at first glance, it would you would expect that that would be the case. But the M1 MacBook Air is not just the old Intel one with the fans removed. They also put something there instead of the fans, which is a big block of aluminium as a heatsink. And that's something that the iMac doesn't have. So, because the iMac is designed to work with fans... They, don't, they haven't put a big block of aluminium there to soak up all the heat from it and dissipate it over time. Um, the point of the M1 Air is that it's designed to do 
really fast stuff for short periods of time and then the block of aluminium will be saturated with heat and it won't be able to absorb much more basically so that's kind of how it can run fast for shorter periods of time um, and then it has time once that task is completed for that heat to dissipate the iMac is designed to have fans running therefore it doesn't have a big block of aluminium to absorb that heat so it will probably throttle much quicker than the M1 Air if the fans are disconnected or broken. Hopefully that makes sense. Alan B Unboxings and News asks iCave Answers, will Apple ever bring back the jet black colour to the iPhones? So this was a colour that was offered with the iPhone 7 and I think that was the only iPhone, the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus. I had it on the 7 Plus, it's the kind of piano black, glossy black colour that uh, honestly it looked pretty stunning when it came out. But even at the point of being released, there were warnings from Apple that it would attract micro scratches. And over time, it kind of gets that look that you get on car paint if it's not looked after particularly well, where you've got um, sort of circular, randomly directioned, mini little scratches that from a distance you can't see. But when you look up close and you turn, it, it catches these scratches in the light um, and it I don't think it ruined the look of it, but I don't think it was a finish that Apple was happy with. So I don't see it coming back uh, in the current form. I would love to see it on maybe a desktop Mac. I think that would be a great place for it because it's not something that you're going to be knocking around in your pocket so much. So like an iMac would be great. Um, it's almost reminiscent of what they had on the Trash Can Mac Pros. I always love that finish. That's almost sort of very deep brown coppery finish that looked black in some lights but if it was in a brightly lit room it had got this beautiful kind of orangey brown tone to it that it doesn't sound good when I'm describing it but it was absolutely stunning and I think that would be a great place to bring back that uh, that jet black for IMAX. And Evan Rogers asks I haven't seen any reports so this is all supposition but do you think Apple is using in-house arm silicon for their servers and infrastructure? I think it would be awesome if Apple was kind of building their own XServe things based on uh, Apple Silicon and ARM. But as far as I know, I think they're probably using Mac Minis. Um, I know there are certainly companies out there like Mac Stadia. I think they're called Mac Stadia. Anyway, there are companies out there where you can basically rent uh, a Mac Mini in the cloud to do whatever you want to do it on. And they have Intel ones and they have uh, ARM ones. I don't know what Apple is using in-house. They've probably got some kind of Unix-based servers out there but i would i would guess that they will transition over to arm silicon for their servers whether it will be based on their off-the-shelf stuff that they're doing for apple silicon in general i'm not sure um they might go to those nvidia servers that i believe are being based on arm that have got 128 cores but also once they get to the point where they've got their own mac pros running apple silicon that will probably be one of the lower power solutions and it will make a lot of sense for them. I also don't know what they're doing in-house, but my guess is that they will transition over to it because in data centers you want as low power as possible because then you can keep your cooling costs as low as possible and your energy use as low as possible, which are the big costs involved in general in servers. So uh, yeah, that would be my assumption that they would do it but I don't have any information on it, unfortunately. And that's it for today's show. If you've got any questions that you want answered in a future show, hashtag I gave answers. Um, news is still kind of light, I'm afraid, guys, so uh, I do need you guys to get involved. Also, if you've got a setup you would like to share, remember you can do that too. Drop me an email, david at sangwells.co.uk, and I would love to share them on a future show. Thanks ever so much, and we will see you in the next one.